Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video and another in our series of Don't Regret It, Use It videos. This series is all about crafty regrets, things that you've told me you regret buying because you're just not getting your money's worth and I'm going to try and use those items and give you ideas on how you can get your money's worth out of them. So far we've looked at washi tape and pattern paper and today's video is going to be the start of a sub-series looking at gel plates because that was one that came up quite a bit. Don't worry if you haven't got a gel plate, I'm going to show you some other ways of getting a gel plate look. So you should still be able to get some hints and tips from these videos. And I'm also going to make a card in every video which you can adapt to the supplies and tools that you do have. So this is an example of a gel plate. It's a mineral oil based slab of gel and there are lots of different types on the market, lots of different manufacturers. But they all work in the same way. So I'm going to pop this down on my mat. It doesn't have to go on a glass mat, it can go on whatever you want it to. And just make sure I haven't got any bubbles trapped underneath so everything is nice and even. So you tend to use a gel plate with a brayer, and this is a brayer, it's just a rolling applicator for inks and paints. And you'll probably see most mixed media artists use acrylic paints on their gel plates. And I will be looking at acrylic paints later in the series, but for the most part I'm going to use ink because that's what we as card makers have most often. I'm going to use Distress Oxide inks, but I've also got Catherine Pula dye inks. So if you haven't got a gel plate, as I say, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to pull prints off of glass. So if you've got a glass media mat or even just a pane of glass or a glass worktop protector for your kitchen, you can pull prints. I'm also going to show you how I use my grip mat to pull prints. Now grip mats look a bit like gel plates, but they're made of a different material. As I say, gel plates are made from a mineral oil based gel and grip mats are generally made from photopolymer, which is the same stuff that we make photopolymer stamps out of. So if you've got a grip mat, if you've got some glass, or even if you just got a bit of acetate, a bit of packaging, this is actually the packaging that came off of the gel plate so you can use that as well. To make my prints I've just got some thin smooth white cardstock. It's a bit thicker than copier paper but it's not as thick as the cardstock that I use to make panels and cards. You can use copy paper if you like or thicker card or anything else in between. So today we're just going to do something really really basic and then we're going to make a card with the prints that I pull. I'm going to start with Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide and smush that down onto the top half of my gel plate. I can give it a really good application and the ink is going to kind of bead up on there but that's okay. And then I'm going to take Wilted Violet and smush that along the bottom. You can overlap the inks, but you might find you contaminate your ink pads. So you can leave a little gap between the two so the two colours don't mix on the pad. Now I've got a bit of paper here. This is going to be scrap paper, but it's going to look really pretty by the time we finish. So it's worth keeping. And all I'm going to do is take my brayer and just roll over the peacock feathers, smoothing it out. And I'm going to come down nice and slowly into the wilted violet and then roll back up that way a little bit and then roll down that way and then I'm going to come all the way down. And you can see how that has blended in a really beautiful way on my brayer and I'm going to roll that off on there and as I say I'm going to keep that because that can be used for something. And what I'm going to do next is take some water in my hand and drip it onto my plate. And take a piece of paper, place it on my plate, 
without moving it or shifting it I'm going to gently press it down so that the whole bit of paper comes into contact with the gel plate. Give that a second or two to transfer and then lift. And now I've got a really beautiful blended background with some really good water drips on it. Obviously you don't have to do the water dripping stage. That's just to add a little bit of extra texture. So that's the effect you get with the gel plate and I'm going to write that on here so we don't forget. Next, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with my grip mat. So I'm gonna smush peacock feathers there and wilted violet there. What you do want to do is make sure these things are as clean as possible because any specks of dirt or bits of glue or anything like that is going to end up imprinting on your print and you might be okay with that and if you are then that's fine. I am generally. So there we go, we've got our uh, blended inks and I'm going to spatter on some water droplets again and press down this paper. I think I had it sitting on a baby wipe so it's got a bit of water on it already but never mind. Again just press it down all over, give it a second and then peel it off. So this is the grip mat and they're very similar this one's a bit more intense, I think. So I'm just making sure that my glass mat here is lovely and clean and lovely and dry. And I'm gonna make sure my bray is clean as well and dry. Got some peacock feathers there and some wilted violet here. And start at the top, you can start at the top or start at the bottom or you could go side to side like that, whatever's more comfortable for you. Draw it down, get them to blend by moving this way as well as left to right, if you see what I mean. Left to right and up and down at the same time. Now we'll get a bit more water. And just gently smooth that down. Make sure it's pressed firmly. And there we have our glass media mat. Now, you can add a bit more water to that, pick up another print, again press down firmly, you could roll the brayer over the back. It was a light misting of water I gave it at that time and you can pick up more colour that way. So that's glass matte plus mist of water. And now a bit of plastic packaging. I'm going to pop it on this paper just so it's easier for you to see. You won't really see it if I put it on a glass mat. So yet again. One of the things that I find with doing it on a glass mat or on plastic packaging is that your inks can actually kind of dry out quicker than they would on the gel plate or the grip mat. And there we go, that's the acetate. I'll give that another mist because we can get what's called a ghost print or a second generation print which is where you get a second print, basically, without re-inking. So that was acetate, second gen. Now I've just had a little thought, so I'm gonna do an experiment. And I'm gonna put my acetate on some foam, just so it's got a little bit of give in it, rather than uh, having it on a hard surface like that. This might not be the best bit of foam because it's already got dents in it from other things that I've done, but it's the bit that I've got, so you've got to use what you have. I 
think we've got a bit of a better lift there. Where are we? That's okay. Oh, it's about the same, isn't it? It's about the same. So let's look at our prints then. This is the one I got with the gel plate. It is by far and away the most intense of the prints. But this is the one I got with the grip mat. It's not quite as intense, but it's a very similar look. So if you've got a grip mat, but not a gel plate, you could use that. This is the glass mat. This was with just a bit of spattering. And then this was after I misted it. So it was harder, I think, for the paper to pull the ink off once it had been brayed out. I think it dries quite quickly on a surface like this, the ink. But it made some really lovely marks around the water droplets. And then when I misted it and did the print, I got this. So I got more of the ink off, but it's a much more softer, diffuse kind of look. And then this is with a piece of acetate. So that was just the acetate on its own. That was the second generation. So that pulled the ink that was in these spots and there was nothing then for it to pull after that. And then this was the acetate on foam, first generation again. And then this was the bit that I used to clean off my brayer. And this is lovely, you can use this on a card. So in a moment, I'm going to make a card with my gel plate background. But what I will say is that for the rest of the series, I will use a gel plate. But if you haven't got a gel plate, try the techniques with a glass mat, a grip mat or a piece of acetate with or without foam behind it. Whatever tools you have, have a go with them. Right, let's make a card. Before I do anything with this background, I want to spat on some gold. So I want to give it some shimmer and shine. So this is my Hybrid Prima Metallic Accents palette with my favourite paints from the originals and the pastels palettes combined in one. So I've just loaded up my brush with this very pale gold and I'm spattering it on all over for shimmer and shine. And now I'm going to dry it with my hairdryer. The card I'm going to make is 5 by 7 inches and I've got a panel here that is about what, a sixteenth of an inch all the way around? And I'm going to get my scissors and trim this down. My plan is to cut three apertures in the left-hand side of this panel and have some of this background showing through the apertures. And I'm just thinking maybe that portion so i'll chop that in half i can keep that for later and if i take a bit off the bottom and a bit off the top that is going to go behind there like that so that is going to sit on there like that i'm going to use these butterfly dies i want them as i say on the left hand side fluttering up like that they're going to make quite big apertures and that's fine because i want as much of that to show through as possible i'll run this through my cuttle bug and hold these down with some low tack tape right there we go i actually had to change my butterfly dies because the ones that i did originally have got a little number printed or embossed next to them and that shows up on the card front which I didn't really want so I've chosen some other ones but it's all working out fine and I think we will have that there so the bottom butterfly is mostly purple there's ever such a little bit of purple creeping in there and then the top butterfly is completely peacock feathers so I'm going to hold that there get my tape runner check everything's still in place and That should be fine. Now this I'm going to put up on foam tape. I've taken the release paper off and now we can add our front panel. And to add a little bit extra to my card, I'm going to take the butterflies, the whole patterned butterflies that go with these apertures and cut them out of something else. And I'm thinking the middle one I'll do from gold card and the other two I'll try from vellum and see how it looks. 
So I like that. I think the gold butterfly might need a bit of a body. I've cut them out a little body with this body die. Yeah, that fits, but I'm gonna chop off the antenna on this one because we don't need two sets. And I'll use some glue dots on the underside of the body. Could use foam tape, I suppose. And pop it there so it looks like it's sort of fluttering out of the aperture. For my vellum butterflies, I'm just going to run a bit of this Crafter's Companion tape runner on the body. I've got my pot of little gold circles that I've cut from gold cardstock with my circle dies and I'll grab some, some of them are proper circles, some of them are wonky circles but it really doesn't matter. I'm going to dot those around just for a bit of extra shimmer and shine and some energy and movement. And for my sentiment, I've got this pre-printed and pre-cut Sending Sunshine to Brighten Your Day, which I think works well with the gold butterfly flying out from the darker background. And there we go. One card made with a gel print. And the gel print was made very simply by blending some colours, brayering some colours on a gel plate and splattering on some water. If you try this, I would love to know how you get on. So let me know in the comments or come over to my Facebook group. And if you do something else that gives you a gel print look, like use a grip mat or glass or acetate or something else, then do let us know in the comments because the more techniques we can muster together, the more choice we have. Right, thanks for joining me and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.